What's up again guys? Yo. I know, right? I should have done this video a long time ago. Ha ha ha. Better late than never. Anyway, I really enjoyed making this vid because 1. It's a bit technical. And 2. It's refreshing because it's not purely about L2R. But before we begin, be sure to hit on the subscribe button for more great videos. First of all, Knox Player 6, company headquartered in Hong Kong, is an excellent emulator too. Performance wise and particularly on running multiple instances simultaneously. I chose BlueStacks 3, company headquartered in Silicon Valley, California, simply because it's not made in China. Ha ha ha. But seriously, because of its graphics quality, performance and stability. Also, most of their company's partners are trusted global brands. And of course, being on US soil, they are subject to its strict internet security and privacy laws. Take note. This depends on your system specs. Nox is ideal for entry level specs. Or if you're gonna play multiple accounts on a capable mid-range to high-end system. On the other hand, as per the gaming experience, BS3 runs unparalleled on capable systems. So, if you are having performance issues on BS3, re-evaluate the capability of your system and switch to another emulator. If you have a capable system but there are performance issues, which ideally should not be the case, this video might help you. I'm assuming that you have BS3 and already running L2R on it. To check your version, just go to the About panel under Settings. The latest version is BlueStacks 3N, with Client 4.1 and above which, sadly, has graphics compatibility issues if using older graphics cards. If your GPU is old, but you are certain that it packs more than enough raw power for today's mobile games, stick to BS3 with Client 3.6 or lower instead. I have BS3N for testing, but my preferred BS3 version is called BGPKK because by default installation, that's its directory name. I think BGPKK stands for BlueStacks Gaming Platform KitKat. Android OS 4.4 and this is the last version before BS3N. Android OS 7.1 Nougat. Take note they cannot run at the same time. Anyhow, if you don't have a dedicated GPU, perhaps Nox is the better choice. By the way, here's how you determine if your dedicated GPU is entry-level, mid-range or high-end. For AMD Radeon, it's quite complicated. And I'm not gonna talk about AMD GPUs and CPUs here anyway. Ha ha ha. We're gonna focus on NVIDIA and Intel. Alright, for NVIDIA GeForce it's CSA. Usually, if it's a GT, it's entry-level. If it's a GTX, it's mid-range to high-end. Okay, let's start with BS3 display settings. By default, this is set at 1600 by 900. But ideally, you should set this at your screen's native resolution. And of course, the quality. Choose high, 240 dpi. Now, let's move on to engine settings. As for BS3 BGPKK and BS3N, set the graphics mode to OpenGL. Because DirectX mode on both versions might cause only the UI to show and everything else to be black. On older BS3 versions, DX is the choice for quality. Because lighting effects, skill animations, glows, etc look like crap on OGL. But now on both BS3 BGPKK and BS3N, OGL lighting effects look as phenomenal as that of DX. 
did the devs just optimized L2R4OGL. Also in BS3N. Uncheck use advanced graphics mode to make your GPU take full control of graphics. On CPU and RAM allocation. The length of the CPU core drop-down list depends on your CPU because BS3 auto detects it. Make it use as much cores as possible to spread the load. By the way, I'm on Intel Core i7. 4 cores and 8 threads. BS3 recognizes threads as cores too. So, potentially I can use all 8. But I'm usually running other resource-heavy design programs which demand a good number of threads too. And L2R just runs at the background. Besides, in my opinion, 4 is sufficient. I tested it to use all 8. But more or less it only used 5 and the load on the 5th one was minimal. On RAM. If your system allows it. Just turn the slider up to max. L2R somehow has a habit of using a lot of memory over time. Ha ha ha. Now we move on to the NVIDIA control panel. And how to add L2R. Or any game that BS3 is running. By the way, BS3 must be closed while you're doing this. Under Manage 3D Settings. Perhaps you already have a prescribed global settings, which becomes the default on all added programs. Global settings are determined by your preference. Performance balanced or quality. Under the adjust image settings with preview panel. Here I've chosen quality, so all of my add-in programs will have quality as their global settings. Now let's add L2R via the program settings tab. There could be a few blue stacks entries here. The significant ones are BS3, which is the emulator itself. And Android Host. Or HDPlayer.exe. Which is the game that BS3 is running. And that's the one you want to add. How was this determined? If you open Resource Monitor while L2R or any game is running on BS3, HDPlayer.exe uses and consumes the most CPU and memory among all active BS3 processors. Alright now that HDPlayer.exe is added. Let me point out the settings that have the biggest impact on quality. 1. Anisotropic filtering. 2. Anti-aliasing mode. 3. Anti-aliasing setting and 4. Texture filtering quality. For high quality. If you've set your global settings to quality. Just leave them as they are. For even more quality. Tweak them up to your liking. Take note. The definition of the gaming experience is playing at the highest point of quality possible without sacrificing performance. When you're experiencing prolonged FPS drops at unplayable rates like 20 below, and you're not in a massive Marlox raid or something. It means you tweaked it up too high. By the way, later I'll show you how to display NVIDIA FPS counter on your games. Anyhow, if for some reason L2R still underperforms even at your default quality global settings, you can set the first three settings I've mentioned earlier to application controlled. And the last texture filtering quality. To high performance. Okay, let's do a mid-roll. A cutscene from the main questline. Ha ha ha. Okay, let's go to gauging your BS3 performance via the FPS counter of NVIDIA GeForce Experience. 
which is only available for GTX GPUs 600 series and above. As an NVIDIA user, GF is an essential app. It has many functions for your GPU, among them is recording your gameplay. All vids under my L2R series slash playlist were recorded by this. And of course this video too. Anyway, what we need is its in-game overlay feature. Under the general panel. Make sure it's turned on. Then click on settings. This will open the in-game overlay settings. Go to HUD layout. Then select the part of the screen where you want the FPS counter to appear. Just click on back then done. And there you go. Now you know why I have those weird green numbers at the bottom right corner of my videos. Ha ha ha. Anyhow 60 FPS is the ideal frame rate. And L2R already caps itself there when set at best. Since I'm assuming you're on a mid-range to high-end system. You should be getting 50 to 60 FPS most of the time. On crowded scenarios like multiple parties on elite clan dungeons open and fortress sieges etc. Prolonged drops of 30 to 40 are normal. On massive field world boss raids or castle sieges. Expect prolonged rates below 20. But the remedy is simple. Just tweak down the other options under L2R's game settings, particularly show effects. Max member count. And cloak. Anyway, as for my main graphics settings in L2R. They are all at best. Alright, for the sake of AFK farming. We tackle CPU and GPU temperatures. The info here will benefit those who are running L2R on laptops. Because desktops have naturally adequate cooling systems. If your desktop is having temp issues, maybe you need to upgrade its cooling system. Or you just have to clean it up. Primarily its CPU and GPU heat sinks and fans. Anyhow, most modern Intel CPUs have 100 degrees Celsius or so junction temps. On the other hand, NVIDIA GPUs normally have roughly 90 degrees Celsius max temps. If you're not getting near these temps even if running things at full capacity, perhaps about 15 degrees Celsius beneath max, you shouldn't worry. But, of course, keeping temps down over time is healthier for our systems. On older BS3 versions on DX mode, temps drop drastically when the window is minimized. But on BS3 BGP KK and BS3N on OGL, they don't. I'm not 100% certain on this. But in my opinion, some DX stuff doesn't get rendered when you're not seeing the game. While in OGL, even if BS3 is minimized, everything gets processed. After all, it's a separate layer. Ha ha ha. The simple solution to greatly reduce those temps when AFK farming is to leave L2R on the clan page and minimize. I've tried all L2R pages and panels and it seems that the clan page is the best choice. Least activity, I think. Okay, we move on to something you don't normally find out there. Key mapping via CFG file. Normally in BS3 you can visually map your keys via the keyboard controls UI. Easier but not precise. And sometimes they screw up. To create a CFG file. Open notepad. And copy paste the text that. I've written in the description of this vid. Save it as com.netmarble.revolution.thm.cfg in the user files folder with location specified above depending on what BS3 version you're using by the way the user files folder will be blank the first time you open it unless you have already configured something via the keyboard controls UI also program data is a system folder and is hidden by default 
Anyway, this is my key map and you should only treat it as a template while you customize your own. All lines of text starting with hashes don't affect anything. They're just my notes. Those under keys are the ones you want to edit. Inside the parentheses are two numbers, each with two decimal places, representing the x-axis and y-axis. That points out to an exact coordinates on the screen. And I'm sure you know this already, so I don't need to elaborate. Take note. Only edit this while BS3 is closed. Also, it is wise to create a backup of the CFG file. And to wrap this up, in regards to devices accessing your Google account, BS3 appears as a Motorola Moto X. Thus, don't be alarmed to see that very outdated phone there. Ha ha ha. Anyhow, I'm not in any way affiliated with Bluestacks. So if you want more info on making it perform better, or perhaps issues, go to their support page. As per the question if the devs support emulators. In general, they shouldn't. But for BS3, the line could possibly be very thin. Given that I think the devs do advertise in BS3, Sora doesn't also L2R ads before. There's even an L2R theme slash skin you can redeem. But I don't know really. Ha ha ha. You be the judge. And that's all there is for now. Thanks for watching. Also, check out other videos from Sabbath Clan Philippines and subscribe. Happy quality gaming experience. Peace out yo.